Welcome to City Life. I'm Beverly Thompson. Durham's now spending more on public art, and as a result, residents and visitors can expect to see more art going up around downtown. Joining me to talk about the value of public art, why our city council is supporting it, and why it matters to our economy, are Sherry DeVries with the Durham Arts Council and Brian Smith with the city's Office of Economic and Workforce Development. Welcome to you both, and thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So, Sherry, let's start with you. Senator Mike Woodard with the uh, General Assembly recently proclaimed Durham as the cultural capital of North Carolina, and that was during the recent unveiling of the fifth Arts and Economic Prosperity Study. That is a pretty lofty claim. What does that really mean? He was very excited, and for good reason. Um, uh, Senator Woodard is also serving as our board chair this year at the Durham Arts Council, and mm -hmm. we're very happy for his help. And um, that study revealed that the not-for-profit arts and cultural sector in Durham contributes over $154 million wow. to our economy, and that includes $104.6 million in direct spending from nonprofit arts and cultural organizations, and over $40 million in audience spending. Wow, that is a huge amount. So what does that include and what doesn't it include? Uh, well, the study also tracks jobs that are mm -hmm. created through this economic activity. Mm -hmm. And in Durham, uh, arts and culture create 5,722 full-time equivalent jobs. $132.5 million in household income. Mm -hmm. And we also give back to state and local government through taxes. Uh, $6.9 million in local government taxes and $6.3 million in state taxes. Mm -hmm. And the numbers uh, include uh, spending by the organizations directly and also audience spending on restaurants mm -hmm. and hotels and any extra spending that they might do in the course of attending arts and cultural events. Mm -hmm. um, it does not include the admission price of tickets because mm -hmm. that's already calculated in the organizational spending. Uh -huh. And the other thing that's really significant is that this is just the not-for-profit sector. So spending from Durham Performing Arts Center, DPAC, and other for-profit uh, arts and cultural venues are not even included in wow. these numbers. So all in all, it's pretty significant spending in the arts or on the arts for in Durham. Very significant. So tell me about the study, the economic uh, arts and economic prosperity study. Who conducts it and why is it done? It's conducted by Americans for the Arts, which is a national arts advocacy organization, and 341 communities participated across the United States. Here in Durham, this is the second time that we've participated. Mm -hmm. um, so the last time was in 2012. So how do we compare nationally? Durham is an overachiever. Oh, We outperform in every single category of the study. So we outperformed on the similar cities, medians and also the national medians. Mm -hmm. So what is a key takeaway from the importance of the arts? Uh, not just in Durham, but across the country even. Really this study is showing that arts and culture are a tremendous way to invest in your communities mm -hmm. because arts and, and culture are a significant economic sector. So it makes cities and communities more attractive, more livable, more vibrant and arts and culture are a cornerstone of tourism. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Brian, let's turn to you. I know your Office of Economic and Workforce Development, as well as the Durham City Council, is making a huge investment in arts, and it really shows the importance of the arts nowadays. So, in fact, the Public Art Fund, I believe, has been set up, and it just recently got a big boost from the Durham City Council. Tell us a little more about that. Sure. Uh, so back in 2011, the City Council created a Percent for Art program, mm -hmm. uh, and that program authorized the city manager to set aside up to 1% of the capital improvement uh, program budget uh, specifically for public art. And so earlier this year, the Office of Economic and Workforce Development uh, asked the city administration for a boost in that funding because mm -hmm. public art is one of our economic development tools. Mm -hmm. And so just to put the funding in perspective, from 2012 until 2017, uh, each fiscal year we received a total of $70,000 for public art. For fiscal year 2018, we received $75,000 just for 2018, so over 100% boost. So yeah. we're really so thankful and really yeah. excited to get some great public art on the ground in Durham. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with all this funding for public 
art? How do we decide where the art's going to go? I mean, who makes that decision? Sure. So back in 2011, when the council created uh, Percent for Art program, they also authorized the Durham Cultural Advisory Board mm -hmm. to create a subcommittee called the Public Art Committee. Uh, and that committee uh, primary role is to advise the city both on public art that the city commissions uh, as well as public art that uh, is donated to the city. Mm -hmm. And so that group meets every month and is made up of lots of stakeholders uh, which include uh, artists, uh, nonprofit arts representatives, uh, business owners, uh, and really even residents who just uh, really care about public art. Mm -hmm. So art's very subjective. You know, mm -hmm. how do you, how do they decide what kind of art looks appropriate or would be appropriate within the city? Well, the, the, the group really tries very hard to ensure that um, we have art that's not only, um, that really is reflective of the community. Mm -hmm. um, and they try to really strike a balance between investing in downtown, which is uh -huh. of course the heart of the city, uh -huh. but also ensuring that art gets into the neighborhoods where people and residents live and work every day. Mm -hmm, that's important. So give us some examples of public art that's already on display in Durham that people probably drop by every day and don't realize don't that it's public art. It, right. Yeah. So in 2014, uh, the city, uh, Liberty Arts, and a lot of uh, area partners uh, created the Bull City Sculpture Show. Mm -hmm. And that brought uh, national sculptures uh, here to Durham. And so, although the exhibit itself was temporary, it was about six months, uh, two of the pieces from that sculpture show are still here. Uh -huh. uh, Winding Out, which is in Black Wall Street Plaza across from City Hall, and uh, The Pursuit of Happiness, which is in front of the Durham Convention Center. Uh, the interesting thing about those two pieces of public art is that they were actually both privately funded. Uh, there were residents and um, arts groups that just liked those two pieces and mm. wanted them to be a part of the city's collection and so mm -hmm. they they donated money to ensure that they stayed in the city. Uh -huh. um, residents may also be familiar with the Durham Civil Rights History Mural uh, which is on permanent display next to the Durham Arts Council right. and um, that was one of the first projects uh, put on by the Public Art Committee mm -hmm. and uh, it really sort of tells the story of Durham's role in the Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. um, and then boy this year we've already done three projects um, the first is the Art Alcoves, which is uh, uh, a sort of a large scale uh, triptych mural uh, across the street from uh, Durham City Hall. Okay. And uh, yeah. it's by a local artist named uh -huh. Frank Kriak. And the coolest thing about that piece, I think, is that uh, it's actually 3D. And so we've got some paper glasses across the street uh, from the mural so residents mm -hmm. can grab a pair of paper glasses and see the art from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So all they have to do is come into City Hall and go to the Durham One Call desk, we right? We made it even easier. Made it they, easier, uh, okay. The glasses are right outside the door, so even when oh, City cool. Hall is closed, they can grab a pair of glasses and, and see the art. Great. Now I know some exciting news is that the fence exhibit is now showing. Yeah. And tell our viewers about this and how it came about. Sure. So the fence is the largest uh, outdoor photography public art exhibit in the world, really, mm -hmm. uh, which is seen by over 4 million people every year. And so late last year, the Public Art Committee and the Office of Economic and Workforce Development uh, applied for Durham to be the sixth city to host the fence. And so just this year, we found out we were actually selected. And so we're happy to join the other cities, uh, Brooklyn, Boston, Atlanta, Houston, Santa Fe, and then after us, Denver, uh, to bring this sort of world-class art uh, to Durham. Mm -hmm. You know, I forgot to mention, I, I saw on TV where um, students were doing utility box art. That's Tell right. me a little bit about that. That looked really uh, intriguing. Yeah, so uh, that was sort of a collaborative process. Uh, we partnered a local artist, Brenda Miller Holmes, with um, five youth from our Durham Youth Work Internship Program. Uh -huh. And those youth uh, went into the communities and took traffic control boxes, which in general not very, not very attractive. Not very uh, exciting or right. sexy to look at. So. And um, we were able to turn those into mini murals. Uh -huh. And so uh, this year we've done three of them. We've done one in Wellens Village, in Haytai, uh, and in Walltown. And so, and so what was great is that we were able to really uh, get a lot of community engagement about uh, how the neighbors wanted 
wanted to be seen. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is to be able to do more of those uh, in the coming year. Mm -hmm. Public arts all around, right? That's right. And yeah. every neighborhood has a control box. Uh -huh. so we can that put is them true. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, Sherry, I understand that uh, an exciting initiative is underway downtown, and that's to create an arts and entertainment district. And it's going to be along the north south corridor of Blackwell, Corcoran, and Foster Streets. Tell our viewers a little bit about the SMART SM Art program. Right, the SMART initiative, um, the Durham Arts Council is partnering with the North Carolina Arts Council uh. and we're also working with local um, and other state partners, so uh, City of Durham and Brian and his team and uh, County of Durham, mm -hmm. Durham County and Duke University and Nasher Museum and Downtown Durham Inc. and about 26 uh, downtown community stakeholders are working on this project to create an arts and entertainment district along this north-south corridor, uh -huh. utilizing major elements of public art, urban design, pedestrian amenities, and lighting to make this corridor really exciting, mm -hmm. um, focusing on the three historic districts of American Tobacco, the City Center, mm -hmm. and Durham Central Park. Mm -hmm. um, and we want to create a very lively atmosphere that's exciting and enticing both daytime and nighttime. Mm -hmm so that people will travel from one district to another, um, particularly from Deepak to come up to city center to uh -huh. enjoy the restaurants and, and bars and uh, retail outlets up in, in the downtown and from Central Park. Uh, so people moving all along the corridor mm -hmm. enjoying um, an arts and entertainment di driven um, district. Awesome, I'm so glad people like you are thinking of things like that. I mean, it, it adds so much to a city, I think. Well, it's really started with the state um, as, a, as a task force headed by Jim Goodman mm -hmm. uh, to look at the ways that arts can be an economic driver in communities. So Durham was very proud to be selected as one of the first pilot projects. Wow. And we're also really excited that we've just been awarded a National Endowment for the Arts Award of $100,000 that we're matching locally uh -huh. um, to undertake the phase one uh, projects. Mm -hmm. So we're first focusing on the corcoran Ramser intersection, mm -hmm. uh, which is such an important gateway to the downtown area of Durham. And the very first piece will be a, a major scale art wrap of the corcoran Ramser garage. Oh, wow. Awesome, congratulations. Thank you. Art's doing great things in Durham, huh? That's right. Okay, well Sherry, okay, I, we have new money, we have new projects, but I'm all about the old standby, and that's Centerfest. Okay, tell me about Centerfest this year and what's happening. This year is the 43rd annual Centerfest, uh -huh. so we're the longest running street arts festival in North Carolina. And this year we're dedicating Centerfest to Baba Chuck Davis. Oh, So neat. to honor and, and mm -hmm. celebrate this incredible person who passed on earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And um, so this year we'll be featuring 147 uh, visual artists from all over the co uh, country and mm -hmm. from the Durham area, and also 75 performing acts on six stages. Wow. Uh, great food, great entertainment. And this year, a new element is that we're extending the Saturday night entertainment until 11 o'clock p.m. Wow. Saturday night. Good. On the CCB Plaza stage and also bands on the uh, Herald Sun stage at uh -huh. Bull McCabe's. So uh, on Saturday night, we'll have uh, Ellis Dyson and the Shambles, followed by Cool John Ferguson, mm -hmm. and uh, then following that with Tom Whiteside and Durham Cinematique for some movies under the stars. So all in an effort to help even more visitors come to downtown Durham, both in the daytime and nighttime over Centerfest weekend. Awesome, I can't wait. It's gonna be very exciting. I love summertime, but I have to be honest, September, when Centerfest gets here, or September time, <laughs> Centerfest time, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So, we'll look forward to seeing you out there. Yeah, I will definitely be out there. So, Sherry and Brian, uh, if our viewers want any more information about the Durham Arts Council or about the city's public arts programs, where can they get it? Our website. Go to our website. We're also on social media, mm -hmm. Durham Arts Council site, and also the Centerfest site. Uh huh. And, and I'd say the same, uh, you can go to the city's website, DurhamNC.gov, uh, as well as check out the city's uh, uh, social media ca accounts. Okay, all right. So one final question for you both. Uh, if you'd like to leave our viewers with any information about the impact of public art on a city, or especially on Durham, what would you say? Well, it, it really is an important investment. So contrary to the belief that arts and, and culture are a nicety or icing on the cake, they're mm -hmm. really the cake. So it's so important that 
arts and culture uh, be an important investment for a community. Mm -hmm. And we also give back through the economic activity that we generate. Great. How about you, Brian? And I would just add that uh, public art is really a major contributor to ensuring that Durham is a uh, creative, diverse, and vibrant community. Mm -hmm. uh, as an economic development tool, uh, we have an opportunity to use uh, public art to really enhance Durham's sense of place. Mm -hmm. um, and I think by investing in creative placemaking elements like public art, uh, the city has an opportunity and is able to uh, further distinguish itself uh, as a cultural capital uh, to continue to attract uh, visitors, uh, talented workers, uh, and businesses to Durham. Mm -hmm. And then I would just finally say that public art, I think, is really about quality of life. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives uh, the community an opportunity to open its mind, to express its uniqueness, um, and to have a role in how it's seen by others and how uh, the community sees itself. And so, uh, in closing, I think uh, Durham is, uh, public art is how Durham expresses itself. Uh -huh. Great. Thank you both for joining me. No better ambassadors for public art than you both. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that does it for City Life. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and watch us on Durham Television Network and on YouTube. I'm Beverly Thompson. Thank you for joining me to learn more about City Life in Durham.